What started as a calm night, watching Lola score the winning prize, yet in another beauty pageant, quickly turned into an awkward and tense affair. Despite the amount of noise generated from the crowd, was another contestant finished her performance. The louds turned as it was Rita and Lincoln continued to stare at each other in silence after greeting one another. Neither one knew what to say, or even what they could discuss. There was a lot of things going on in Lincoln and Rita's minds that prevented their vocal cords from producing any sound. Only using the excuse of the loud noise beyond the curtain as a cover. Eventually the twins got so unnerved at the tension that they worked up excuses to get away from it. Lola pretended that she needed to keep an eye on her companion, so they didn't copy her and Lana had to use the restroom. Even though the two girls were gone, the white-haired child and the middle-aged blonde were still trying to work the urge to speak. But what could the mother and son say? Sorry I cursed at you, I thought you were a curse and everything could go back the way they were? Stuff like that only exists in fairy tales. Both individuals knew their relationship was damaged to the point that it was almost difficult for one to address the other as a good blood relative. Rita felt some sort of blessing that Lincoln still referred to as his mother. He could have easily called her by her first name, to which not only broken her already damaged heart, but also honed the fact that he didn't see himself as her son. She could only imagine Lincoln referring to Lynn as Sir instead of Dad. At the at least, it hadn't got to that point yet. Studying the boy's face, Lincoln was biting his lower lip down, eyeing her uncertainty. Catching a gaze as it matched his own, the monarch breathed in awkwardly, as she needed to stop acting so childish and address this ha now. This might be one of the few times Rita might get to see her son in person over the next few days or weeks, and she'd be damned if she didn't make it count. First, they needed a quieter location away from everyone else. Lincoln, can we talk in the hallway? I don't think we'd be able to speak clearly with all the noise. Lincoln shifted his eyes on the floor and fought before giving an example simple nod. Without another word, the boy followed his mother across the backstage, past all the girls prepping for their acts. Once they reached the hall, they stepped into some 20 feet from the door before Rita addressed her son again. So, the mother spoke with a tinge of confidence. How have you been so far? Been doing okay, for the most part. The male's response was rather cut. Did you enjoy your lunch with your sisters yesterday? Lincoln nodded, lightly scraping his foot on the tile floor. Lenny won a few games we played. To our surprise, the food was nice, and Luann didn't help, couldn't help but crack a joke every now and then. But it was a little rocky at first. Gil crept into Lincoln's features. I made Luann cry after yelling at her about past last April Fools. But, but we made up, though. I also liked the video she and Luna made. I was a little surprised that Lenny actually made a bed and a dresser for me. Lincoln couldn't help but smile at the fact that the notion of kindness. Rita smiled at that. She already knew about her little time at Jillian's throughout her daughters, but it was better to hear Lincoln saying that he had a good time. He also understood why he'd be cross with Luann. The whole motel prank was still ingrained in her head, as well as the punishment she doled out when they got home. Luann was grounded for two months, and Lynn Sr. had to sleep on the couch for half the time due to his involvement. Out of all the money lost from renting that property, required the two adults to work together longer than they usually have so they could get it all back. So their food budget was even more square than it already was. This was also a side effect of the kids' allowances being temporarily suspended until the two adults got their finances back in order. Rita could still remember that one day where the kids fought over a quarter stuck behind the sofa cushions. At least then, Lynn decided to ease their greediness by giving up the bonus he earned from those long hours. Even though the kids tore it up the house, was it trying to solve that clue? Well, I'm glad you had a fun time, Sweeney. And I'm guessing you liked Lola's performance too? Lincoln nodded. She felt that I hadn't really forgiven her, even though I did a few days ago. Rita gave a small hum in response. While Lincoln's responses were laced with confidence, he could tell that he, he still wasn't at ease. His stance was indicated to what he was holding on to something that he didn't want to let slip, 
or he was debating whatever or not he should. Whatever the boy was going to say, the mother knew it was going to be directed at her and she shouldn't mind it. Rita felt it was coming for a while, but she would do need to encourage Lincoln to speak in it out. How has it been living with the Santiago's? That question came out before she could stop herself. It felt like as if it was a bit too direct. Even catching Lincoln off guard, it's been okay. Mr. and Mrs. Santiago are very nice people. Bobby's been like an older brother to me. The boy's face then became fainted with, and red. Me and Ronnie Ann got to know each other more, and it almost, it almost, Lincoln stopped himself from saying anymore, but Rita wanted him to finish. Lincoln, Rita knelt down to his level. I know, no, for this is there something you aren't telling me. I know you're still mad at me at your father, but I won't hold that against you. So I'm asking that if you need to say anything, don't worry about me being offended. You didn't hold back against your sister, so why would you need to worry about me? Lincoln stared at the floor. Because you're still my mom. While I was staying at Ronnie Ann's house, I felt that I was like at home. Like I actually had people who cared and loved. I mean, it's changed a bit over the last few days, but that's what it felt like on my first few days there. He rubbed one arm of his arms to calm the jittery nerves building up. Miss Santiago was very caring and understanding. To the point that a few times she actually reminded me of you. Well, I mean the old you. I could say the same for Mr. Santiago. Although I didn't expect him to go and yell at my dad like he did. I was reminded of all the fun times we used to have before this whole thing started. And now, Lincoln just looked at his mother. Whenever I think of you both, I just... I get these mixed feelings and I don't know what to do. I'm mad at you guys for not doing something more sensible. But I'm also sad that... He looked at the floor again. Dad, you and Dad don't love me like you used to. Rita frowned. She had a feeling he was going to say that. Lincoln, me and your father never stopped loving you. The child's hands balled into fists as he began to grit his teeth. Then why, Mom? Lincoln yelled out, making the monarch flinch back in surprise. Why didn't you or Dad do anything when it was clear that I had been lying the whole time? Why did you think it was a good idea to lock me outside that morning? Why were you guys so willing to listen to Lynn, but quick to say I was lying when I was telling the truth? Why did you even try to sell my stuff? Were you planning on keeping me out of the house for the rest of my life? The only emanating between the two was Lincoln's harsh breaths. Rita didn't even know how to respond to the questions that were asked. Aside from admitting how dumb herself and her husband acted, this lack of input from Rita began to irk Lincoln even more. Seeing his face scrunch into a deeper frown, he wanted to lay into his mother and, and about clear how it seemed that she would rather prefer having daughters over a son. How often he had to be the reasonable one in the house when the parents were either too scared or not around to give some insight to the girls, and how it almost seems like everyone was being quicker to blame him for something. But he'd be hesitant if a loud sister was at fault. At least... That's not what going through the top of his head. The snow-haired child had a mind of to start referring to Rita by her first name, something that would further explain it, the lack of trust he had with his parents. In fact, he can now call Rita herself a parent anyway? Hiding from your own kids when they grow an attitude? Letting said kids run without guidance, not only after noticing some momentous this happened, on top of locking one of your own outside of over false parentheses, the 11-year-old's hands shook uncontrollably as his rage was close to erupting. However, Lincoln had to put a lid on it. His anger expression turned into a solemn gaze, giving away a heavy sigh. He didn't feel angry anymore. He could get mad at his parents all he wanted, but there was one thing he could blame himself for, taking advantage of one's stupidity. He knew he couldn't trick his sisters into buying more humor, rumor, even Lisa shockingly, but he would have to admit he would have been alarmed of his parents that brought into this as well, and it wasn't the first time he had tricked his sisters, so it wouldn't be an issue. Attitude onto that, his habit of failing, realize how bad his plans were go early, but have him bit up behind more times than he could ever count. Rita grew a little confused seeing her own son from going outright pissed to almost uncaring attitude. 
Before her voice comes to the concerns, Lincoln spoke. The boy shifted his hard gaze back to the floor. I could blame you and Dad for a lot of things, but this is my fault. I lied to you just so I can get the alone time. I didn't try to end this before it got too far. I should have stopped up to the moment when you and Dad thought I was really bad luck. But what did I do? I just ignored it until it got out of hand. He tried to make it seem like it was he was still ticked off, but now it seems the seeds of depression were beginning to sprout. I, I really, really guess I wasn't the one of the 11 best things that come into your lives. I, I found out that day that Dad took the girls to work was actually called Take Your Child to Work Day, not Take Your Daughters to Work Day. You took me to work with you, but I ended up destroying something you worked hard on for years. Lincoln unclenched his fence hands as he could feel his eyes become watery. It's my fault. I couldn't stop at the store for a while. I should have told the girls that they weren't couldn't come. It's no, it's my fault that the van got destroyed. All over a seat. No less. How many times do have I clogged up the toilet and try to hide it? I was even the first person to start selling stuff that wasn't on the list at our garage sale. And it's my fault the house became a pigsty because I wanted a d d different chore. Not to mention the embarrassing my own sisters for a s stupid trophy. The boy freebie wiped his eyes, giving a low sniffle as he felt his nose running. I, I know the girls had done some b bad things, but I've been a terrible son. I wouldn't blame you if that's the only reason you guys almost left me at the state park one time. I've been selfish so many times, but what happened lately really shook, took the cake. Not only did I lie to try to get out of being my own f family, I even almost had you and Dad arrested out of anger. Lincoln brought a hand to his forehead in frustration as tears began to stream down his, through his face. I, I didn't do it because I realized I still loved you guys and I didn't want you to spend life in prison. It's probably selfish of me to make you guys go through all this, but at the s same time, I just... I just d don't know what else to do. Rita didn't expect Lincoln to go from an anger-fueled rant to a one of self-loathing. After that fret, turning his own family to the police, she had expected Lincoln to be rather jaded and cynical about the whole end of Vader, especially when she finally had the chance to talk to him in person. However, the cynical part was only lasted for a few moments before Rita finally saw how Lincoln was really feeling. He may have been angry and heartbroken, but overall it seemed like the worst means to mask the depression and anguish of the boy that stood before her now. The blonde woman could agree that Lincoln wasn't the best son, but he was definitely one more she couldn't trade for anything in the world. That itself was rather hypocritical with the precious possession that her family was in, but at least they were trying to work and make amends. Memories of that last Thursday came to mind, with Lincoln trying to hide his sad state before running away. Rita unconsciously balled her hands up. She couldn't let this happen. Not again. The monarch gently took her son and brought him into her embrace. Lincoln was a little startled by this action, but he didn't even try to resist. Instead, the boy became weak in the knees and began to bawl in his mom's arms. Shh, shh don't worry, Lincoln. It's going to be all right, she soothed, matting down the hair of the back of her son's head. The arm of the, her shirt became damp with tears, but not that she cared. Rita was just glad she was lucky enough to be able to hold him again. She wanted to cry as well, to release the pain she felt at being in a compared parent, to pour her heart out to her son for not realizing how her own actions made him feel like he wasn't loved. But the mother had to steal her nerves. She had to be strong for the both of them. And two crying humans wouldn't help. After for a few moments of constant tears, Lincoln finally stopped. He gave us small hiccups every now and then. Then, but, but Lincoln, I know you aren't the perfect son in the world. I mean, if someone asked me the definition of one, I wouldn't know how to tell them. But if there's one thing I would say, that it's the son I have now. He's the greatest gift that I had for 11 years. Me and your father had loved you since I had been carrying you inside my tummy. 
and loved you even more when you finally passed through my birth canal. You've made mistakes in the past, but you always made up for them, and they weren't really much as an inconvenience to us. Rita gave a small pause to think back of the accusations Lincoln had on himself. Well, it was okay and hard to get the van reassembled after all the furniture in the house was already no cakewalk, but it wasn't hard to shop at another store. Plus, I told you that I had lost interest on that novel some time ago. Sure, I had a bits here and there, but I already wrote myself into a corner at that point. As for now, everything has happened over the past week. And yes, you did lie about being bad luck. Yes, you didn't, you didn't try to convince us otherwise until it went too far. But that was where your blame ends. Now, intentionally, me and your father didn't believe in your bad luck. But the problem was for us was that the more the girls kept complaining about it, the more we started to believe it was a huge mistake on our part for not confronting you in the first place. I'm sorry about it, dear. It was the shittiest mistake of my life, and your father and I have done it by removing you from the house based on the silly rumors. Now I'm not sure what would have happened if we did keep you outside any longer than night, but I'm glad it only lasted that long. I don't... Read a bitter lower lip. I don't want to think about what could have happened to you if we made you sleep outside again in the cold. Old Lincoln gave a low sniffle, wiping some of the damp, salty moisture from the corners of his eyes. I'm sure you already know none of us are happy with the prospect of you calling the police, and we never blamed you for that, Rita stated in a somber tone. She pulled away from her son a little to look him red in the eyes. Have you ever heard of those stories on the news where parents just being arrested for child abuse? Lincoln nodded and gave a meek nod. What you did was any other child likely would have done in their your situation. It wasn't selfish of you, Lincoln. You were just doing the right thing. But but what if you and the, the dad if it happens then we both would have deserved it. I know what I said we had ten kids on that day and your father corrected me on that. I meant to say eleven, but I was already mentally drained from talking to Lynn about his ties. You know, that myself and your father don't try to pick favorites when it comes to our kids, which results in some very questionable situations. And because of that, we didn't even change the way we handled ourselves around you guys. We ended up making you guys believe we preferred um, our daughters over you. Didn't care enough about your well-being until it was too late. Even worse, we told you kids we would never get rid of you. But look at us now. Rita looked at the floor in shame. You may think you failed as a son, Lincoln, but I failed you as a mother. I'm not even sure how I can make it up to you, but I can assure you this. No matter what happens, I'm not going to let a situation like this ever happen again. Lincoln gave a sideways glance. How can I be sure? He looked back at Rita. How can you promise me that this won't ever happen again? Rita sighed. I don't know, sweetie, but if it does... Promise me this, I don't want you to have any second thoughts of calling law enforcement once all this is over. If we end up locking you or your sisters outside for any legitimate reason, don't hesitate to call the police. Lincoln bit his lower lip in hesitation. It was indifferent, since it seemed like she'd do anything to avoid going to prison, and now Rita was accepting whatever consequence she faced, she would ever draw such a response from her son. Without things were going so far, Lincoln didn't think he'd be bringing up the attention of law enforcement, but the determined look on Rita's face told him she wouldn't be having any second thoughts about it if he told her otherwise. Okay. The boy's voice was low but a whisper when he spoke. The two pair heads had obliged gaps. Glancing at the doors of the auditorium, the pair spotted the loud twins poking their heads out of the door. They were unsure or of how long they'd been standing there, but it was enough to the point where they ran up to their mom with worried looks on plastered faces. But mom, you can't go to jail. Who, who's going to take care of us? Lola squeaked out. Who's going to watch us grow up? Lana added. Rita gave a small smile, shuffling her hair at of her daughters. Let's just hope it's something we don't have to worry about. This didn't calm the nerves of the children one bit. Lincoln felt his stomach sink his eyes becoming very watery again. It was one thing for them to be torn up over a decision made, and this enforced the fact that he didn't know his fret about calling the police loomed over the entire family. 
Seeing the twins was on the verge of displaying their own waterworks wasn't doing him any favors. Lola turned her attention back to the double doors, hearing the distant sound she all knew too well. Uh-oh, they're going to announce the winner soon! She lightly touched her face, noticing her mascara had become running due to light crying. Ah, I gotta fix my face! The princess dashed back to the auditorium. Rita was about to follow her before noticing the distraught look Lincoln had. She put a hand on his shoulder in a reassuring way. Hey, it's gonna he's not it's gonna be all all that not all that bad, sweetie. I know me and your father still have to work earn to earn your trust again. So how about we take you to Dairyland this weekend? Sounds like fun. Pop up did say I could try to be open to myself more, Lincoln told himself. Even if I'm still unsure if I could forgive Mom and Dad, I should at least give them a chance, like I did with Lenny, Luna, and Luann, and I could never pass up a trip to Dairyland. He nodded. I think that would be fun. I'm sure it will, Rita replied, before giving him a light peck to the forehead. Now let's go watch Lola ring another pageant. She stood up, shaking her legs a bit due to the amount of blood rushing from them and a side effect from being crouched down for a long period. The white-haired boy's cheeks flushed red with embarrassment at this sudden affection from Rita. But when he smiled at her, he wouldn't say it out loud, but it felt nice to receive that kind of attention again from one of his real parents. In the room they shared by a certain sports fanatic and a golf chick, Lynn was snoring rather loudly as she lay sprawled up onto her bedspread. Snorzilla had been like this for several hours, which during every one, Scans, Lori, and Lisa in the house had actually noticed. They weren't sure of how they, he, she had managed to get to sleep, but they didn't want to interrupt. Lucy checked on Lynn periodically, was it working on her poem. There didn't appear any signs that Lynn was experiencing other than night terror. She looked up as if she was sleeping like any other day. The golf assumed that Lynn must have finally got tuckered out from trying to avoid sleep as its sweet embrace calm claim her. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be any fervor from the truth. A familiar feeling was felt as if Lynn's lower regions, meaning she was going to have to use the bathroom soon. Her brain became active from its forced slumber, beginning the tenuous process of walking and waking up the rest of her body. Lynn stopped snoring. Her vision blurred as her eyes slowly creaked open. Blinking twice, she wiped away any dead skin that formed around her eyelids before sitting up, the bed creaking as the weight shifted. The Jacques stretched her arms and legs out, grimacing lightly as her joints gave small pops. Twisting the spine to get similar results, Lynn gave a small sigh as she sat cross-legged, waited for the body to be fully awake. How was your nap? Lucy asked, not taking her eyes off the book. It was fine, Lynn scratched her side. She didn't do too much else for a few seconds. Before Lucy's words were finally registered in the head. Wait, nap? She then panicked in the air. Lucy glanced at her roommate. You were out cold when I came in here. Stay like this for four. I guess I thought you would have had another nightmare or something. But thankfully you slept like you usually do. Loud and annoying. The eight-year-old gave a low smirk before directing her attention towards the work of literature in her hands. Lynn glanced at the clock at the nightstand. It was just a few minutes after 10, six hours of sleep, and surprisingly, she didn't have any nightmare or anything of that sort. Her mind was just stuck in a blank state the whole time. The 13-year-old squinted her eyes at the clock, thinking back to how she ended up asleep. I was lying in bed doing nothing spectacular. Then Lori came in, and why does my neck feel so itchy? She spoke in awkwardly, scratching the right side of her neck. Getting up, she gingerly walked to the mirror, to Lucy's side of the room, despite looking her usual dreary self, Lujang noticed a small red spot on the side where she scratched. At first she fought fangs and bit her again, but whenever a bat wanted to taste her blood, he always ways fell two punctures holes very close to each other. She fought back to what Lori entered her room, recalling something in her hand. Lujang's eyes went wide as the memory came back to her in full force. For the first time in a while, Lynn felt something that she thought she wouldn't experience again. Rage. Her eldest sister barged into her room, purposely drugged her with whatever it was, just to get her to sleep. All the while she was begging her not to do it, that she did not care about the reason the brunette was avoiding sleep. 
Gritting her teeth, uh, hands balled into fists, Lin shouted in a single sentence that was loud enough to adjacent the rooms to hear it. I'm gonna kill you, Lori! Lucy looked up from sh her book, watching Lin quickly grab her crutches. Wait, why do you wanna... The door slammed shut before she could finish. Lin quick walked as quickly as she could to the eldest sister's room, huffling after each breath. Luna and Luann and, and the twins poked their heads out to see what all the commotion was. Balancing herself on her supports, the 13-year-old knocked, kicked the door open with her good foot. The blondes were startled with a sudden intrusion, but suddenly shook it off. Oh, hey, Len, did you enjoy the nap like I did? Lenny asked in her usual happy tone. Lynn ignored her. You! She pointed at Lori before strolling over to the bed. The other sisters peeked in the room of the doorway. Enjoy your nap, Lynn. Lori gave a small smirk. Don't act like nothing happened earlier. It was for your own good, Lynn. The 17-year-old stated, her smirk dropping into a frown. My own good? Lynn dropped her crutches as she jumped on the bed. She grabbed in front of Lori's shirt and pulled it within an inch of her face. So drugging me to make me go to sleep and possibly get another nightmare is supposed to be a good thing? The other girl sounds Lisa, gasped at this revelation. Well, did you get any nightmares? Lori answered, not at least by intimidated by Lynn's bravado. I, well, I didn't, but, but nothing, Lynn. Lori prodded the young teen's chest with her finger. The rest of us were sick and tired of you being so depressed and making you look worse than you already were. She then pushed against Lynn, enough to make the 13-year-old fall off of her butt of the bed. I didn't want to have to do it, Lynn, but you didn't leave me much of a choice. At the rate you were going, you were literally making your foot injury at least half least of your concerns. Look, I get it. You think that Lincoln is never going to forgive you, no matter what you do. But that doesn't mean you should literally condemn yourself into a slow death. What? Lynn folded her arms in defiance. No one said I was dying. Actually, my fifth eldest sibling, Lisa cut in. She was correct. I took a few samples and you were suspended of consciousness, found your lack of need of rest had slowed you down to the healing process of your etches heal. Not to mention you were somewhat malnourished and dehydrated. Lynn shifted uneasy at the news. I, I didn't think it was that bad. Lynn, Lori said in a more comforting tone. Like I told you before, we all miss Lincoln. It's bad enough we lost him for a while, but we don't want to lose you too. And if anything, putting you to sleep brought out the old you. Like the one that doesn't take any crap from anything. You almost looked like you were ready to pounce me. Well, of course, Lynn rubbed her arm nervously, giving a small grit. Um, sorry? Don't be. Now I want you to go downstairs and eat something. Dad left some goulash in the fridge for you. Look, Lori... I appreciate you trying to help, but I'm not. Lynn stopped as her stomach gave an audible growl. Lori gave a knowing smirk at that being right. Fine, I'll go eat something. And I don't want you to relapse, Lynn. So we're all going to try to make sure you are getting a proper rest. Eating and drinking until you're back on the feet. Lynn half glared at her older sisters. She didn't need to be babysat like a toddler. But Lori's tone indicated that it was more than... In order of a general statement. Finding it pointless to argue, Lynn gave a simple nod before reaching to her crutches. Wordlessly, she walked past her sisters into the bathroom. She needed to avoid a light of body of waste before she could eat something. Once the door was closed, the other sisters crowded around Lori. Dude, did you really do what Lynn said you did? Luna asked. Yes, I did. I'm just really glad I didn't accidentally put her in a coma. Well... You could use me a little more, more, more recommend dosage, so I wouldn't be surprised if she slept till 200 hours, Lisa inquired, as she read the chart on her clipboard. However, it seems to wear off quicker than body needs to met. Still, don't you think that's kind of injecting her privacy? Luann quipped, giving a short laugh, but everyone else then just rolled their eyes at the pun. Still, I've... Are you still going to end up using that more often? Lola asked. I've watched quite a few videos on iTube on how someone can grow independent on antidepressants or something like that. Lisa gave a slow snort. Pish posh. That serum isn't some kind of drunk that will induce dependence on taking it needlessly. Too much of it 
and our sister can end up in a catatonic state, street name coma, for a few days, such as it would only be used on a needly basis if Lynn were to experience another bout of depression. Do you think it's right to force her to get better? I mean, don't people, like, do that on their own? Lenny asked. It pains me to say this, but I doubt Lynn would have gotten any better on her own willingly. I thought she wouldn't have to worry about it after I tried to get through to her. But we all know that how it worked out. Death is always cold and cruel when it comes to slowly, and Lynn certainly doesn't need that. Lucy looked at the bathroom door. We should at least be thankful one of us had enough spirits to do something about it. The rest nodded. Still, I don't want Lynn to believe Lincoln won't forgive her. I never even had a chance to talk to him yet, Lori added. Mind if I make a suggestion? The girls look at Lisa. If we can, can't get her to stop her chronic depression about Lincoln's absence, maybe we could try a different approach. Like what? The oldest blonde asked. We could get her to accept that if Lincoln doesn't forgive her, she shouldn't let that stop her from trying to be a better person. It's a simple psychology lesson that would provide some solstice to Lynn, if on a temporary basis. It's not like she made any progress over the last 168 hours. Luna became irate at this. Wait, hush, dude! So you're just gonna tell her she can't even stop offering to try? In a way, the project clarified, we should try applying to Lynn some competitive side, to which might be spur or something into the brain that will remember her to try. Knowing that Lynn hates coming last and seeing that she almost looked like her usual sporty self, it's best we tried soon before she slips back into Lucy mode. I would be offended by that remark, but it is true, Lucy stated. Hmm, Lori wrapped her finger on the bed. You might be right about something, Lisa. Let's just hope this actually works. If it doesn't, then the only thing we could get through to her is to literally arrange for Lincoln and Lucy to, to meet. Behind her dark veins, Lucy gave a hard glare at Lori. Don't push it, Lori.